What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Neglected and Became OP Part 5. Thank you so much for the support on this on these videos. It's been absolutely crazy. I know once again I have been posting a lot, but once if it's at all possible, hit the like button right now. I know you're in the premiere, so hit that like button. Let's try to hit a thousand likes. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. It'll be the first link down in the description below. Seriously, thank you for all the support and thank you to all my balance breakers and limit breakers as well. And before I say anything else, I have two other channels that have a pal skin follow KXD that I will be posting on. So go ahead and subscribe to them down in the description below, or I have been posting on. So thank you so much for the support. And without further ado, let's go ahead and thank my balance breakers. Rob the King, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Seth Voiles, Aunt Lewis, The Beast YT3, Colex, Joe Baldwin, Madara Uchiha, Reefik135, Zapper363, Keep saying 21, Blue Lightning, Lewis Bermudas, Hellhound, VR Wolf Hashtag 2347, Sanitates, Night Ammo, ZK2000, The J Boys, The PS Gamer, Xor X108, Mr. Wolf, Legendary San 98, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the Bomb, Asimotus, Grim Fireshot Gamer, That Round Guy, Zero Fusion, Source Bonder, God Said Why, and Chaotic Raven. Thank you so much for becoming a balance breaker. Without any further intrusion, let's go ahead and get into. Part 5. Picking back up where we left off. They met in the middle as their fists met in a clash that shook the foundations of the arena and sent shockwaves through the air. The disengaged in Dove and once more for another powerful clash. On and on, they were trying to overpower one another. Fist and feet were flying as they fought for dominance. The audience at the stadium and at home was completely engrossed in the fight and the emotion that was given off by both fighters. As more hits connected, blood started going flying from the concussive impact of the blows. It was now a battle of stamina and will power. All fancy tricks and elegance was thrown out the window. It was about who could outlast the other. More and more hits landed as dull impacting sounds reverberated throughout the arena. Bones could be heard creaking. From the power of the hits, people started to either move or edge of their seats or stand, as they could sense something at the end approaching. The Orsi and Rius watched as shock as Issei, throughout the match, fought and spoke like a completely different person. If it wasn't for the sacred gear he was using, they would have thought he was an imposter. The level of strength now far outstripped anything they could ever hope to put up. It was truly an eye-opening experience. Azazel on the ground with a proud smile on his face as the weak little boy he knew grew up to be a fine man indeed. He wondered if this was what proud fathers felt like. Ravel looked on with a gentle smile on her face as Issei-sama fought his heart out. Seeing him now reiterated to her that she made the right choice in choosing him. She slowly put her hand together in prayer, a devil praying. The irony was not lost on her. For Issei-sama's win, for she had to complete an unshakable faith in him. The two competitors were staggering as they dug into the tank for their last attack. As Sarah Org moved in the brutal looking punch, Issei activated the Kenobushu Hakai for one of a few times in the match and saw the trajectory of the hit and dodge at the last minute before holding up his arm. Buso Shokukoka, he whispered as the entire left arm of his armor turned black. Sarg was too drained to get out of the way as he saw the attack coming. You win today, say Hyoto. Thank you for the marvelous fight and for showing me that light once again. Were Sarg's last thoughts as Issei's hockey enhanced fist connected with his sternum, knocking him out as his back hit the ground and his armor dissipated. Silence. Issei released his balance breaker before walking over to Sayorg, bending down and giving him his pat on the chest as a sign of thanks. Sayorg Bell loses. He retires. This is the end of the game. Rias Grimmery's team's victory, the announcer Rudrier Rosenkurs says. It's over. Issei Hyoto had defeated Sayorg Bell. The Grimmery team win, shouted Nod. The entire stadium burns into cheers simultaneously in appreciation of the spectacular fight they bore to witness. Rhea shed a few tears and happiness at her parage attaining victory and her beloved bond coming through for her in the end. The rest of her parage were happily celebrating in the medical ward. Suna Citri shook her head in disbelief. Her queen was in a similar state of mind to think that the infamous pervert of Ko actually defeated the strongest youth devil. She needed to go over this match again in her spare time to analyze the strategies. One thing's for sure though, she needed to keep an eye on Issei Hyoto in the future. 
She suddenly blushed as less than savory thoughts filled her mind. Luckily, no one but her queen noticed as her parage were busy cheering their schoolmate on. Ravel shed tears of happiness at seeing her easy Zama finally get the recognition he deserves. She hoped this led to his promotion, as she couldn't wait to stand by his side where she belonged permanently. As Issei took in the cheers of the crowd, he turned towards the fan section of his show where the children were salute situated at. He smiled gently at them as they enthusiastically cheered for him. He raised his hand in the air as a large magic circle appeared out about the stand. From it fell out a multitude of Opai Dragon merchandise, including shirts, caps, and balance breaker plushies, all signed by him. The cheers roared around the stadium as they saw his gesture towards the children who idolized him. It reverberated with them, especially those of the common birth and those who were incarnated. It was at that moment their hearts that dubbed him their champion. Issei raised his arm in victory as the name thundered across the arena. Issei, Issei, it felt good to him, the recognition of his deeds and use of acknowledgement of his strength. He backed in their adulation a little longer as the single through rang through his mind. This is just the beginning, he said to himself. Now we go to chapter four. Chapter four, life goes on. The sun illuminated the morning streets of Ko beautifully as many teenagers and young children made their way to school. Some could be seen chatting excitedly with their friends. Others were on their smartphones discussing the latest trends in movies. One lone teenager was calmly making his way through the streets towards Ko Academy. He was dressed in regular uniform with the exception of his shirt being long-sleeved that were rolled up to his elbows that showed his tone and defined arms and torso. He also the only guy wearing earrings, along with his green eyes and braids and his shaggy hair, made many young girls blush and giggle excitedly at the mysterious student. Issei Hyoto just kept walking calmly, carrying his bag over his shoulder, seeming to casually ignore everything around him and when in fact his senses were sharp and his hockey honed to perfection. His training taught him to always be aware of his surroundings and be ready for an attack on his person. It was also amusing to him that nobody recognized him and that the same girls who used to sneer at him for being a pervert are now fangirling over him. Outwardly, he kept a stoic suppression. It expression. Inwardly, he was laughing his ass off. A few months ago, he would have been jumping for joy receiving such attention from these girls. Now, though, he couldn't care less. Maybe it was his increase in power, his newfound confidence, or maybe his dragonfication, but he felt that they were beneath him. They were hypocrites and undeserving of his notice. Therefore, he didn't register any of them as he continued his track. As he walked on, he thought back to the aftermath of his rating game victory. The Flashback the atmosphere was celebratory in the infamy housing that remaining members of the Grim Ray Parage, they celebrated their victory in grueling and hard-fought raiding game. Although they haven't put a previous victory under their belt against Sona Citri, it couldn't really count as satisfying win. This one, though, gave them all the feeling of pride and accomplishment defeating the strongest youth devil to put them on the radar of many people. They were joined by their king Rias, Azia, Irina, and Ravel. Rias was in tears as she congratulated him thanked her servants for fighting so hard on our behalf. Has anyone seen Issei? questions Zenovia with the tilt of her head. Her question elicited many emotions from the occupants of the room, mostly positive. They were all wanting, they are all waiting for bated breath to see their friend again. He made a stop at the other infirmary. He should have been here in a few minutes. He should be here in a few minutes, came from the answer from Azazel as he stepped into the room, followed by Sir Zex, Graphia, and little Milikis. Rhea Sonisama, congratulations on winning, cheered Milikis with an adorable smile on his face that made many of the girls coo at his cuteness. Ritan, Odicha is so proud of you, exclaimed Sir Zex, with many tears running down his face as he made up to gloop his sister before the ever-reliable Graphia intercepted him by the way of the hand to his ears, followed by a painful twist. Sir Zexama, you're the Mal Lucifer. Please show proper decretum, stated Graefia with a long-suffering sigh accompanied by the shrieks of pain from Sir Zex, which made the members of the RC chuckle uncomfortably. Seems like you guys are having fun in there. Came a cool voice from the door. As they looked towards it, 
The star of today's show stepped into the room, accompanied by atomic blushes of the females of the room, including Gravia. Although she had more control of herself, he still had the same pants and boots from earlier, but now swapped out the combat vest for a white button-up shirt with the button undone giving them a glimpse of the delicious neckline adored by the dragon fang necklace. Over the shirt he wore the black leather jacket that extended to his knees with whitish gray fur along with the collar. All in all, he excluded an aura of a cool bad boy. Rius immediately sobbed uncontrollably, as all the emotions she's been bottling up these last few months all came rushing back to her as she barrels towards him in a hug. As she cries into his chest, apologizing for what happened and asking for forgiveness, Easy just gives a worried smile and pats her uncomfortably on the shoulder, telling her that everything's okay and that he doesn't hold a grudge. Relief immediately filled the ORC as he said those words. They thought things could finally go back to normal, that is until they noticed that Issei wasn't drooling over Rias, like he usually does, or making any inappropriate remarks about Opai. If anything, he looked totally impassive in her presence. This worried them as they realized that things aren't going to just fix themselves, and the guy who usually fixes things doesn't look like he wants to. After Rias disengaged him and made herself look presentable, Issei turned toward the other occupants of the room. Sir Zex, Gravia son, of course, little Milicus. Good to see you again, greeted Issei politely toward Sir Zex and Gravia before patting Milicus's head, making the little boy go into a temporary state of bliss. The former sm smiled widely as he put his arms around Issei's shoulder while his wife politely greeted Issei back. Good evening, Issei sama. Congratulations on a magnificent battle fought. Pr praised Gravia stoically, as Issei blushed lightly at the praise from someone he holds in high regard. Thanks, Gravia san That means a lot coming from you, he said. Seriously, Issei Khan, that fight was one for the ages. Not to mention your little speech in the middle of it. Do you have any idea what kind of stir it caused among the higher-ups? Questioned Sir Zex. Stir? I don't know what you mean. I just spoke my mind like I always do. I thought people were used to that part of me, asked Issa with a sly smile on his face and his eyes shining with mischief that Azazel and Sir Zex burst out laughing. It's safe to say your little training retreat paid dividends, stated Azazel. Yeah, I really did. I feel better than I ever have in my life. Plus... I learned a lot, a whole lot about the supernatural world as well. The boosted gear really is a well information if you know where to look, replied Issei, with a subtle wink to Azazel who caught on quickly to this meaning. Issei Nisama, you were so cool out there, praised Milikus, with stars shining in his eyes as he gazed at Issei in admiration, making Sir Zex crouch in the corner with a storm cloud over his head as he drew shapes into the ground with his finger. Say saying how Issei was stealing his son away making everyone in the room sweat drop while Gravia's eyebrow was twitching iterably. Issei just ignored the drama and picked up little Milikus and put him on his shoulder, regaling him tales of his awesome victories, making the little boy gush in excitement and the girls in the room coo at the adorable scene. Gravia just smiled softly, seeing two of her favorite boys get along. She would never say it out loud, but she had a bit of a soft spot for Issei. He was like a goofy little brother that he couldn't help but love. You cut it pretty close today. You're normally pretty punctual, so why were you late? Questioned Azazel curiously. Issei just sheepishly scratched his head as he responded. Yeah, well, during the time I was training, I erected a powerful barrier spell to contain any damage. I caused, which I released a few hours before the match, but as soon as I released it, I found someone waiting for me on the other side, spoke Issei. While he didn't lie, he didn't tell them the entire truth either. They didn't need to know about the time dilation field for now. The others were a bit surprised that he was able to use a barrier magic as it wasn't something common. Their surprise suddenly turned into alarm at the prospect of someone lying and waiting for Issei. Was it the Chaos Brigade? Questioned Sir Zex sharply. His earlier good mood vanished as he was in full leader mode. Issei just shook his head negatively. No, I doubt it. If anything, it was the old Mao faction. I took care of the problem though, so there's no need to worry, assured Issei cryptically. The adults in the room could sense that he didn't give them the entire story, but when he signaled with the eyes, they knew they would get it later in more of a private location. 
Once the war passed, things were back to normal with boisterous conversations from Sir Zex and Azazel. Issei went over to Gaspar and praised him for his bravery, making the Daphnir sob in happiness and as the senpais praise. The others got a word of two of congratulations. They did notice the thought that it seemed a little impersonal compared to the usual compliments of Issei, and made them a little sad on the inside to see this change. It felt as though a gap opened up between them and Issei. They could only hope to mend their fractured relationship in the coming days. As the festivities continued, Issei walked over to his manager who sat at the corner of the room. Her face lit up in joy seeing his which she quickly tried to mask with a facet of indifference. Issei just chuckled at the Sundari's tendencies of his beautiful blonde manager. Hey Ravel, good work today. No, only in the stands, but for organizing everything just that as I asked. In fact, it turned rather out better than I imagined thanks to your dedication. I'm proud to call you my manager, commended Issei, with a warm and kind smile on his face as he patted the head over Ravel, whose face ignited an atomic blush, along with the most blissfully happy expression on her face at the praise of the man she loved. It was like her greatest dreams had come true. There were even tears at the corner of her eyes as she basked her presence of admiration of her beloved. Anything for you, Issei-sama, Sama, stated Ravel, who was still lost in sensation of praise. There were those who didn't look happy at this interaction, though. Rias, Akino, Azia, Zenovia, Irina, and Konako were wearing expressions of extreme jealousy at the interaction between the two of them. Issa was so formal and indifferent when dealing with them on his return, but with Ravel, he was so warm and friendly. Like the old Issa was with them, they felt a pang of sadness in their hearts at this. Was this the consequence of their actions and selfish behavior? They didn't like it at all. They needed to work on fixing their relationships with him as soon as possible. The flashback ends. That was Friday afternoon. It was now Monday morning and those girls have been pestering him about his training and trying to get reactions from him by dressing simply around the house. It was honestly getting on his nerves a little. He did appreciate the view of their barely clothed bodies, but their constant attempts to make things up to him was wearing his ridiculously long patience thin. Luckily, he used his disciple to keep himself from reacting outwardly to their provocations, much to their disappointment. He finally made his way into the classroom and took his regular seat just as the class was about to get started, drawing the attention of everyone there, the teacher included. Excuse me, young man. I don't think I was informed of a transfer student. Are you perhaps in the wrong class? Questioned the teacher politely, easily just slightly irritably, knowing what a headache this is about to become. I'm not in the wrong class, Miss Hanakawa. I only took a two-month break, but I didn't think you'd forget me so easily. It's me. Issei Hiyoto, stated Issei impassively, causing many spit takes and jaw drops as the rest of the class looked at him in unimagined shock and disbelief. What? Was the general consensus. Hiyoto, that pervert? What the hell happened to him? When did he get so hot? Issei, you traitor! There were the predictable reactions of his classmates. He paid them no mind as he focused on the young teacher, who was blushing as he gazed at him. He decided to turn on the charm as he looked at her and smiled politely, causing her, as well as the female population of the class, to blush even more at the many of the guys stared daggers at him. Would you like me to get the note from the student council to confirm my identity, Miss Hadakawa? Questioned Issei benevolently, turning the teacher into a shuddering mess as she shook her head negatively. Taking a moment to collect herself before continuing the class, the level of killing intent directed at his was somewhat impressive, he had to admit. He just ignored them though, as focused on the class. Even though his tutors made sure he was educated in the basics of including math, science, history, which most of them lived, and politics, he still decided to try and be a good student if nothing else, than to make his parents happy after the years of disappointment he caused them. Scene change. As he packed his books away, and took out his bento, he sensed the perceived danger and suddenly shifted his body a few degrees to the side and angled himself in such a way the punches missed him completely causing the offending parties to fall flat on their faces from overextending themselves. He just shook his head at them. They never learned. Issa, you bastard! How dare you betray us like this? We were partners, and now you come in here with your bishwin looks stealing all the female attention? At least send some our way, demanded Motohama as Matsuda just nodded along next to him. Issa fought the urge to face palm at the two. Is this really what he was like? A wave of an embarrassment overcame at the thought with a certain red dragon laughing in his arm and his head. What on earth are you talking about? 
I can't help the way I look, and I really don't care what these girls think of me, so you don't need to feel threatened about me taking them. I have actual taste, thank you very much, and now if you'll excuse me, I needed to have my lunch, stated Issei, with half-lidded eyes pissing the two off even further and making the girl swoon at his cold and cutting mood comments. Saying it made him even more attractive, he just sweat drop at being surrounded by these idiots. He grabbed his bento before hurrying out of the class as elegantly as he could. Scene change. Currently, we find Issei, chilling out on the couch in the student council room, eating his bento. He ran into his friend Saji from the Sea Tree Parage who invited him back to the student council room to hang out. But man, Hyoto, what the hell have you been doing to end up like this? I watched the match with Biel and you totally dominated it, seriously. What the fuck have you been eating? Screamed Saji, hysterically, as he grabbed Issei by the collar and started shaking him. Issei just looked back at his friend with a deadpan stare. I haven't been eating anything different. I've just been training really hard, plus. What can I say? Puberty was kind to me, stated Issei with a playfully mocking smirk on his face as Saji broke down in tears and unfairness of the world. He recovered quickly, though. By the way, congratulations on being selected for mid-class promotion trials, said Saji with a clap to the back. Issei just smiled in thanks as he thought back to that day. Mid, or flashback. Mid-class promotion trials, huh? Sounds about right, stated Issei. He was currently situated in the large conference of the Hyota residence, which was currently occupied by the URC, Irina, Azazel, and Serzex and Grapia. The current Mal Lucifer stopped by to inform them of the recommendation for promotion for three of the members of the Parage, namely Issei, Akino, and Kiba. Rias, of course, was bursting at the seams with pride of her cute servants and their achievements before making their official rating game debut. It was a huge accomplishment for her parage. Akino and Kiba were quite pleased as well as they acknowledged the praise from the fellow club members while Issei just looked like he expected it. Issei knew this was coming as the defeat of Sire Org Biel compounded all of his other achievements together, giving the higher-ups no choice but to promote him. He also knew that his little dig at the council played a big role in it as well, gathering the overwhelming support of the commoner devils to his cause. The political pressure facing them was probably too much to deny him any longer. Normally, he would have been promoted straight to being a high-class devil, but this is probably just another one of those old farts to flex whatever masculine power they have left. Issei isn't too worried about it. As with the state of the world at the moment, it won't be long before he has another achievement to add his collection that will force them once again to promote him. The three of them thanked Sersex for the opportunity and accepted the promotion and the conversation continued. So, like the next week, the three of you, Issei, Kiba, and Akane will participate in the middle class devil promotion test at the underworld. Serzek stated, causing some murmurs for an abrupt date of the test, while Issei just raised his eyebrow again. Thanks to his training, he could read between the lines of this as probably being another attempt from the higher-ups to stifle him by giving him little time to prepare for the test. He just smirked to himself, thinking of those idiots and their petty attempts. His tutors prepared him for this test, and one to follow months ago. He didn't have a single thing to worry about. Sir Zix continued to inform them of the format of the test, which was surprisingly similar to the ones in the human world which consisted of a report, an essay, and application questions. Luckily, according to Sir Zex, the recommendation is permanent, so even if this test is failed, you can take another opportunity. As the discussion was coming to a close, Ross Weiss is stored up. Now, since the discussion is basically finished, I will take my leave, she said. You going somewhere, Ross Vaisa? Questioned Issei. He didn't really have a problem with interacting with Ross Vaisa. She wasn't a part of the argument two months ago, plus she was pretty outspoken with him. She wasn't afraid to call him out for his perverted tendencies, and she was also a good friend to talk to, so they had plenty of friendly relationships with each other. To Northern Europe, I'm thinking of returning home for a while, she answered Issei. Just raised his eyebrow as at her as a universal sign to continue as she blushed lightly at his detached expression. She coughed lightly into her fist to regain her composure before answering. Currently, I think I'm lacking power. There are many occasions where the Grammary team fights strong opponents. At this rate, I will become a hindrance. I'm thinking about increasing this trade of Rook, stated Ross by bashfully. Issei just nodded his head in his understanding, and he did the same thing a few months ago, after all. I see. 
Well, good luck, Ross Vaisa, but considering it's you, I'm sure you'll do great, stated Issei with a charming smile, causing the Valkyrie to blush prettily. She couldn't help it. He looked so much more handsome now. Occupied with his power, maturity, and his cool disposition made him a very attractive for the sign, a young Valkyrie. Not that she would say that out loud. She didn't have the most confidence in these areas. Ross Vaisa, is there something you can rely on in Valhalla? asked Azazel. Yes. There is a senpai of mine who is professional in that department. It seems that getting points at magical attacks during the Valkyrie candidate test has been vain, answered Ross Vaisa. Easy just nodded his head. He already had great respect for Ross Vaisa. She was extremely talented at magic, only being two years older than him and is hailed as a prodigy. But she still remained kind and humble person at heart, which he found very endearing. She was also a fearsome warrior on the battlefield, and the dragon part of him was drawn to that. Looking at the balance of her team, of Rias' team, it would be good to have someone who uses magic. It might have been good to use Bush Up or Pawn to increase her strong points. Rias' team has overwhelming firepower, but looking at it as a whole, it has a shallow defense that can be easily taken down by some tricks and techniques. Even though Akino and Gaspar are talented in branches of magic, and Issei quite, showed quite the mastery of fire magic in the last game, in the past, games in actual battles the opponents aim for those in other words the whole team has muscles even in their brains something like that defeat them before getting defeated covering those parts with magic would be a good thing as azel pointed out amusedly causing bitter smiles on the faces of the gremory parage and rias to be blushing in embarrassment while isei chuckled at the good nature lead knowing that he had a lot hell more tricks up his sleeve that he has yet to show but there are many fans that prefer teams like your group. Strategy type teams and technique type teams are hard to judge at first glance and lack extreme fights, but expert fans like them, stated Sir Zex. Yeah, so Rias and Cyroorg's team should use their flashy fights to attract an audience while improving their strategies. That way, in the future, the professional games will be heated up, followed Azazel. Yeah, so Rias and Cyroorg's teams. Either way, you needed support to back up those powers, so it will be alright to send Ross Vaisa to Valhalla, Rias? Azazel asked Rias. Yes, if there are certain areas they want to improve, then there is no reason for me to decline it, Rias also agrees, seeing that Ross Vaisa gave her her gratitude. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, I also made the test paper for the mid-semester test, so please don't worry about it, she says. As expected, stated Issei, and he just turned out the rest of the conversation. Tuned out. Flashback end. Thanks for that, Saji, said Issei in response to Saji's congratulations. Well, I think it's appropriate recommendation. You went through lots of life-death situations, right? I participated in the battle against Loki in the battle of Kyoto, so I understand. You will die at battles like that. Normally, you would die. How many strong foes have you had as your opponents? They are all opponents who come from mythologies or recorded in history, Saji pointed out, and curiously causing Issei to laugh at his friend's plight. You survived through those battles and achievements, so I would say it's an appropriate thing. Are you going to skip through ranks? Don't you guys already have the power of high-class devils already? Like you and Kiba, for example? Inquired Saji. Apparently, in terms of position, promotion, we have to follow the protocol and become mid-class devils first, pointed out Issei. Hmm, so the higher-ups don't have the good will to do the right hey. Kyachu said that... You, Kiba, and Akino Senpai have the power to become high-class devils by skipping through ranks, since it was a Sikiru, holy demonic swords and holy lightning, said Saji. Issei just nodded along, knowing he was right but nothing else could be done about it, at least for now. I also want to get a promotion, but before that I need to get stronger, Saji says with a bitter smile. You are strong enough already to be promoted. You do have a Dragon King Vitra with you, after all. All you need is some achievements that catch the attention of those stuck-up council members in 4B, you say, making Saji swell up a little bit at the praise before he became complimentive. Maybe you're right. But it's not just me. I want to get stronger with other Sea Tree members as well. Lately, our Kyocho has been discussing with the Grigar about the artificial sacred gear that is, said Saji, gaining Issei's interest. Oh, artificial sacred gears, you say, stated Issei with an interested expression. Yeah, we, the Seizure Group, often participate in experiments of Azazel Sensei. As a result, next time, one of our non-sacred gear possessors of our group is going to be equipped with an artificial sacred gear, said Saji. Easily just nodded his head. The Seizure members... 
while talented in their own right, just didn't have anything that jumped out to people as a defining trait. With the exception of Saji and Tsubaki, they were all pretty average. Ah, it's Hyoto-kun, said a girl with pigtails, as the Bishop Kakusa. Congratulations for your promotion recommendation, she continues, followed by the other members also congratulate them. Thank you for all your kind words, said Issei, politely causing the girls to blush at how different the aura around him seemed compared to his usual perverted antics. Genjiro Senpai, Kachio said to that document, the first year girl the Pa Nimura is, says to Saji. Ah, uh, that, Roger the Ninimura, replied Saji. Genchan, I also have business which is from Kyacho. The second year bishop Hayaka said says it to Sanji. Are you serious about that, Hanaki? Looks like I have a lot of things to do. First of all, let's do the ones which are easier to finish, Hyoto. I will be going then. Just relax by talking to others, says Saji, as he leaves the room with Hanaki-san and Nimuru-san after saying that. Apparently, from what Isik was told by the Rook, Yura and Bushop Samukanaka-san, the second year girl, and the Bushop Hakimimaro, and the first year girl, the pawn, Nimuru Ruko, are having intense clash over Saji. Hanaki-san, Issei remembered, was the girl who was carrying the pack of his blood inside it during the raiding game against Seatree. Nimuru-san is the one who got defeated by Konako during that same game. Hanaki-san was originally Yudo's fan, but apparently she is the type who can distinguish between dream and reality, and she realized that Kiba is someone who she cannot reach. So she set her heart taken by Saji, who continued to work hard. Nimuru, on the other hand, has been beside Saji and has been supporting Saji with the student council work and devil-related works. Because she's been right next to him, she apparently fell for Saji, who takes everything seriously. Looks like you're also busy, Saji. I hope you can see their feeling for you, thought Issei with a worry smile. While he was thinking about his friend's love life while drinking green tea, the rook, Yura, came up to him with an autograph paper. Yodo, can I have your autograph? She asked bluntly, causing Issa to sweat drop. This girl reminded of him of Zenobia. Okay, but are you sure you want mine? He asked just in case. Of course, the battle against Biel? I saw the recorded video and became deeply moved by it. That was the best fist fight ever, said Yura, who seemed to be Issei's fan. According to Yura and the others in the room, there was a discussion about who the girls' types are amongst the devils attending the school of Issei, Yudo, Gaspar, and Sanji. Yura told Issei that he was her type. She said she likes guys who seem to be covered in mud, causing Issei to sweat drop at this girl. Although the thought that Yura sure is a bishop even though she has really high popularity from girls for having a bishopman face. On a more disturbing note, the knight, Megure, prefers Gaspar. She seems to like younger boys. Young boys are good, Megure says it naturally with a serious face, causing Issei to mentally tell his cute kunai to turn and run for the hills from this crazy lady. I definitely prefer Kiba-kun, said Kakusa-san, who is a big Yudo fan like always. Also, the Fuke teacher Tsubaki is also Yudo's fan. In terms of being a fan, Tsubaki is greater, and Kasuna apparently... She fell for Kiba after losing in the game at the Underworld. Issei surmised that it's one of those love stories where the person finds out their feeling after the loss and heart of battle. He thought the encounter not too long ago smiled worriedly as he could relate. Kazusan, do you want me to introduce you to Yudo next time? Asked Issei politely, causing Kakusan to get overjoyed at his suggestion. Really? But can you introduce Tsubaki Senpai first? She's seriously in love with Kiba kun, she asked graciously, making Issei that the chastity of his fellow male parage members are in serious danger from these crazies in the room. So, Hyoto-kun is here. I see, said a familiar voice as Issei turned to see Sona Citri in the room. Yo, Sona, I thought I'd drop by today, spoke Issei casually. Sona was taken aback for a moment. Nobody was that casual with her, excluding her lunatic sister, not even Rias. He even called her by her first name. She looked, she took a moment to compose herself before she spoke to her barrage. There's a guest here, but I want everyone to do an errand for me. Subaki is having a hard time against the clubs, said Sona, getting an affirmative reply from her barrage. See you later, Hyoto-kun, they say before leaving the room, with Issei waving them all goodbye. As they left, Sona coolly made her way to her desk and started organizing paperwork. Issei just sat casually and continued drinking his tea. There was a comfortable silence around them as Sona got work. 
It was the first time they were alone with each other. Congratulations on your victory against Sarag, as well as the mid-class devil recommendation, said Sona, causing Issa to smile handsomely at her promoting a small blush on her part. Congratulations to you as well on a hard-fought win against Sikiri Agrius. It was truly a fascinating game to watch, complimented Issei, causing her to blush to increase even further. She didn't know why the resident pervert suddenly had this effect on her. Thank you, she replied stoically. They continued to sit comfortably in silence for the rest of the time, with Sona occasionally sneaking glances at her guest and blushing all the while. Scene change. Currently, find Issei in a large bathhouse in the basement of the Hyoto residence. He was currently relaxing in the warm water, warm for his blistery hot non-draconic people, that the bath offered him. He complimented his life since the incident at the clubhouse, and he feels that it turned out as well as it could. Even though it's been a roller coaster of events, he feels, though, as he grew exponentially, not just in terms of power, but as a person as well. Even though the relationship with his fellow Parage members are at an impasse at the moment, and still feels a little ho hurt over what happened, he decided to move on. There's no use moping about life some emo bastard even though he may never have the same levels of trust with them that he once had he can put it aside differences to work with them and help each other in the future that's as far as he's willing to go though he won't make the same mistake for the third time during his complimentations he thought back to the encounter he had just before the raiding games and the unique individual he met he couldn't help but feel a connection to this person and his usual helpful nature was in full force on this occasion and that is where we're going to stop for now. I apologize for stopping right like at a little bit of a cliffhanger again right before we introduce this mysterious fellow in Issei's flashback, but this is all I can read for now. Thank you so much. Your boy has been studying, working, uh, doing a lot, so I am on the grind. And I, uh, we have like a little bit of a test in a couple of days, or my bad, tomorrow for track. And it's time to, it's time to get some things done. You know what I'm saying? So, but I really want to do, so I've been killing it over on my second channel and Popowski in general, and I have a ton of Dragon Ball fans now. So I'm going to send some of those people over here and I cannot wait to put up a poll and you're going to see this poll and it's going to be who is stronger, Issei from the light novel or Goku in the manga. And when people start debating, it's going to be crazy. And I might even make a possible video about it, in my opinion, on the situation or just telling who would win in general, because actually it's just facts. But thank you so much for the uh, thing. What ifs on Dragon Ball and Goku? Many of those coming soon, specifically Dragon Ball. Be prepared for that. What if he said Ultra Instinct still in the works? Don't even worry about it. In fact, forget about it for about a month. So, <laughs> so I apologize for that, of course, but your boy has something to do. Once again, thank you to all my balance breakers. I really do appreciate you guys for coming out and supporting me in like this situation in general. I really do appreciate all the support that I do get during the school year. It really does help and make my life a little bit easier. And whenever I have something like, and whenever I'm like feeling down, I actually just hop on and record. And like in this situation, like, oh, I'm good right now. Just for clarification but whenever i'm like if, I need, if i'm battling something you know what i mean like i'll cop on record and i'll see everybody's comments and it really does bring me back up and it's like listen bro like you built yourself and you got to get back on track forget about it move on you know things like that and i want i just want everybody you know if you guys ever feel the need to like pour your heart out in the comment section you 100 can because your boy gets it so thank you so much for the support guys and without further ado spartanic arts dxd out